Studios. This is Sports Night, brought to you by Wachovia. And speaking of live, you are looking at a Citizen Bank Park where the Phils and Pirates do indeed get set for uh, the second game of their series. You can see that game right here on Comcast Sportsnet at 7 o'clock. Hello there, I'm Phil Andrews, and this is Wachovia Sports Night, and we will get a preview of that game between the Phils and Pirates in just a skosh. But our top story tonight, Donovan McNabb, as we check in on our Ransom Cat Countdown to Kickoff Report. Countdown to Kickoff is brought to you by Ransom Cat. Lance Crawford actually reporting the training camp today. Fortunately for him, though, it's at a re as a reporter and not as a player, although... <laughs> Lance, I'm sure those wide receiver skills are still intact, right? Uh, don't know about that, Phil. Certainly, it's good news for the Eagles that I'm not out there. They've got people with plenty of talent. Of course, they're off to a during the regular pretty fast season. start here on day one. McNabb takes every single snap this year. Of course, they're also hoping uh, that season ends in February in the Super Bowl. All right, Lance, thank you very much. Yeah, it would be nice to go back to a Super Bowl and actually win it this time around. That's for sure. Well, minus All-Stars Chase Utley and Aaron Rowan, the Phillies took care of business last night, beating the Pirates 8-1. Yes, it was a rain-shortened eight-inning affair at Citizen Bank Park, but a win's a win. Game two of that series on tap this evening. With a preview, we check with John Bork. He's joining us live from just outside the Phillies' dugout. Uh, JB, what's going on over there today, man? Well, I can tell you this, the newest Philadelphia Philly will be starting at second, but when he takes the field, he will be making a first. Tadahito Aguchi will be become the first Japanese-born player to wear a Philadelphia Phillies uniform in a Major League Baseball condition game. is not known, but they should have an update later tonight. All right, that's going to do it from here at the ballpark. Let's send it back to the studio. All right, JB, thanks a lot. Yeah, a tough story there. Hopefully both of those employees are okay. All right, stay tuned for the Phillies and Pirates right here on Comcast Sportsnet. Uh, all the action coming your way at the top of the hour. Speaking of action, how about the uh, – the Mets and Nationals, game one of a day-night doubleheader at Shea. Top of the fifth, already 1-0 Mets. Orlando Hernandez gets Ryan Church looking. Jesus Flores uh, doing a little bit of the same thing. And uh, Nuke Logan swinging strike out the side. Hernandez went seven strong, and he struck out eight. Bottom of the seventh, uh, game tied at one. Ruben Gotai with the base hit to right center. Jose Reyes is going to score from second. Put the Mets up two to one. Then two batters later, Carlos Delgado with a base hit to right. Go tie hustles around from second. He beats the throw to score, and the Mets go on to win this game three to one. So, with game one of the Mets doubleheader in the book, and the Phillies still yet to play, here's a look at the updated National League East standings. You see there that the uh, Phillies percentage points actually ahead of the Braves. They're four and a half games back of the Mets. So here's hoping the Mets lose tonight and the Phillies win. And, of course, those numbers will change. We'll update for them for you tonight on Toyota Sports Night. Mets and Nets play game two at seven. All right. Still ahead here on Wachovia Sports Night, Barry Bonds inching closer to Hank Aaron. We'll uh, hear from the Phillies as history looms. Plus... Jeremiah Trotter in, so is Takeo Spikes, but who will be the third starting linebacker for the Eagles? There are two candidates already in Lehigh. Lance Crawford will have that story when we return. We are back with this quick reminder. Uh, J.D. Durbin getting a start against the Pirates tonight. Now, Durbin coming off his first ever big league shutout. He did that against the Padres and has pitched uh, two uh, very good games in his last two outings. An ERA of, well, you see it right there. It's so small you can't even see it. 0.60. Not a bad ERA. Well, at times last season, the Eagles' defense had some problems stopping the run and defending the intermediate pass. And part of the problem there coming from the linebacker position. Well, this year, Jim Johnson's defense will start Jeremiah Trotter and newly acquired Takeo Spikes at linebacker. But who will be the third and starting linebacker for the Birds? With more on that spot, we're going to go back out to Lehigh and more from Lance. Lance? Yeah, you know, Trotter and Spikes have a ton of NFL experience, both of them entering their 10th NFL Phil. season. Down the road, Stuart Bradley maybe as a middle linebacker. In fact, he took a lot of snaps today at middle linebacker because Trotter and Omar Gaither aren't here. So you could look at your linebackers maybe in two years being Stuart Bradley in the middle, Chris Gokong on the strong side, and Omar Gaither on the weak side. Eh, something to talk about, but of course, we're talking right now, and that's going to do it from Lehigh. Phil. All right, thank you very much. Yeah, uh, Jim Johnson there saying that they are going to try him out of Mike Linebacker, which is that middle linebacker role. And uh, Lancey certainly is big enough to play that position. All right, nice job. Thank you very much. Uh, some other NFL notes to pass on. Uh, the Chiefs have told holdout running back Larry Johnson he'll be fined $14,000 for every day he does not report to camp. 
And according to the Indianapolis Star, Corey Simon, yeah, the former Eagle, said he expects to report to Colts training camp uh, despite his uncertainty with the team. That ought to be interesting. We'll keep an eye on that one for you. Well, the Tour de France now just one day away from its uh, finale, if you will, after American Levi Leipheimer uh, won today's 19th stage and as a result held on to third place overall with the victory. But the overall leader is Spain's Alberto Contador by just 23 seconds over Australian Cadell Evans. Now tomorrow's uh, the final stage, as we mentioned, it's going to end along the Champs-Élysées in Paris. Leipheimer, by the way, he is 31 seconds back of the leader Contador. 755 is now just one swing away for Barry Bonds. We'll talk uh, to the Phillies and see what they have to say about Barry Lamar's impending date with destiny. And after the Sixers let him go, C. Webb had a homecoming with the Pistons. But will he be there next season? We'll let you know when we return. Okay, we return with some NBA news to pass on. How about this? It appears the Pistons may not re-sign Chris Webber. If so, there are rumors that C. Webb uh, may be headed to Orlando. Magic GM Otis Smith has said he's very interested in the former Sixers forward. And the Celtics have waived Villanova alum Alan Ray. Ray played in 47 games during his rookie season last year with Boston. 2-1 pitch. Swing and a drive. Left center field. Hit a time. Out of here. 7.54 for Barry Bonds. He's one away from Hank Aaron. Yeah, Barry Bonds took one more swing towards history last night, launching home run number 754. He needs just one more to tie Hammer and Hank's all-time mark. Of course, Bonds is certainly the big buzz around baseball. With more from the park, here's John Borick. The baseball world will be watching with mixed emotions as the next homer that Barry Bonds hits will tie the all-time home run king, Hank Aaron, and a record that has stood for more than 30 years now. The Phillies are fans like anyone else, and they will certainly remember when this moment happens. I can't wait for him to break it. Um, look, I'm looking forward to it. Uh, you know, I was excited watching it last night when he hit 754, and, uh, and hopefully tonight he'll tie it, and hopefully soon he'll break it. I think it's uh, definitely cool. I mean, you know, my, my take on it until you're, you know, just like anybody in life, and uh, you know, and you're innocent until you're proven guilty, in my opinion. And uh, so, and, until something comes out that shows me proof, then then I definitely commend him on what he's done. I mean, he's doing something nobody's ever done in baseball. The Phillies are second all time when it comes to teams that have served up a home run ball to Barry Bonds. And the last one that Bonds hit against the Phillies was number 744. That came against John Lieber back in May. From Citizens Bank Park, I'm John Bork. Let's send it back to the studio. All right, nice job, JB. By the way, you can see more of John tonight. He'll be the host on uh, Phillies Post Game Live, and he'll be joined by Former Philly closer Ricky Vitalico providing analysis that's following tonight's Philly Pirates game here on Comcast Sportsnet. Speaking of which, here's another look at the ballpark. Uh, nice night for baseball. Hopefully the rain will hold up. We'll be back to wrap this thing up right after the break. All right, once again, this programming reminder for you, Phillies and Pirates doing game two of their three-game series coming up right here on Comcast Sportsnet at the top of the hour. But that's going to do it for this edition of Wachovia Sports Night. Before we go, just want to let you know, Braves in action in Arizona right now. Their game is tied at three in the bottom of the 10th. Remember, they are tied with the Phils, four and a half games behind the Mets in the NL East. That's going to do it for me. We're going to leave you tonight with some video of the uh, Phillies uh, father-child game, if you will, before today's game at Citizen Bank Park. What a cutie right there. Everybody, I'm Phil Andrews, and welcome to this inaugural edition of Drive Magazine. That's right, a television show done by the 76ers, about the 76ers, and presented to you in a way like you have never, ever seen before. Now, this season, we're going to try and stay away from the X's and O's and all that game planning stuff, and actually bring you unprecedented access of your favorite 76ers players. We're going to take them away from the game, away from the court, and put them right there in your living room.
How about that? All those people in that arena that night, and it was Maurice Chiefs to the rescue helping that young lady out. I promise you later in the show, we're going to go one-on-one -on -one with Mo. But right now, I'd like to talk about one of the superstars of the 76ers, number three, Allen Iverson. Without a doubt, one of the most electrifying athletes here in the city of Philadelphia. Heck, in the entire country. His jersey is among one of the top-selling jerseys in the National Basketball Association. But this summer, we found out that Allen's appeal goes well beyond the boundaries of the United States. As the television voice of the Sixers, Mark Zumoff, found out when he traveled halfway around the world with AI to check in on the NBA craze fans in Southeast Asia. Or maybe a man who's always maintained the importance of remaining true to his roots. It made me feel good about, you know, who my mom is. It, it means so much because she raised me that way, you know, just to be who you are and um, deal with everything that comes with territory. First of all, let me just say, I'm very jealous that you got to go with AI to Southeast Asia, but I'm happy for you. And with well, that said, you. you've known Alan since he was a rookie. Mm -hmm. And I've got to ask you, his appeal in Southeast Asia, where does it stand? I mean, is he as popular as we think he would be there? I'll, I'll tell you what, it's unbelievable the fact that halfway around the world, we went on a very long play ride, a totally different culture, two different cultures, and to see the kids dressing like him, playing like him, being all over him when he was there, and then seeing him actually take off his jewelry and, and his uh, headset that he had on and playing with the kids, it was just a great sight. Now, Morton, for the most important question of all, did you at any time learn any Chinese or Japanese while you were there? Egg Fu Young. Oh, hey, and you know what, folks, when you're in another country, it's always important to know how to order food. Absolutely. Mark Zumoff, television voice of the 76ers, job well done. Thank you, my friend. Thank you. Here in the Eagles locker room, the throwbacks are hung with care as the birds soup back up in Midnight Green for week four. Hello there, I'm Phil Andrews and welcome to another edition of Eagles Locker Room. Here I am high above Lincoln Financial Field in the Eagles Nest. But you know, it was down there on the field where for the last three years, Steve Spagnuolo roamed the sideline as the Eagles linebackers coach. But during this past offseason, well, he decided to travel up the Jersey Turnpike to take on the defensive coordinator job with the New York Giants. Well, the recent Giants-Eagles game marked the first time that student faced teacher as Spags faced off against his mentor, Jimmy Johnson. I got to tell you this, judging by the outcome of that game, he certainly learned a lot while he was here in Philadelphia. Now, as you can see, the difference in this one came in two areas, penalties and the Giants' defense. Now, the G-man hurried quarterback Donovan McNabb 13 times while setting a franchise record with 12 sacks. So it's been an up and down ride for the birds in the early going. Now, as Merrill Reese told us earlier, this buy could not come at a better time, giving some of the nicked up birds a chance to heal. And trust me, folks, they're going to need it when you look at the rest of the schedule coming up after the buy. After putting the ball in the end zone eight times in week three, the Eagles were held without a touchdown in week four, something that has only happened to one other team in the last 80 years. The team? The 1973 Atlanta Falcons. They won 62 to 7 in week one, only to fall 31 nothing the following week. If you've ever been here in South Philadelphia for an Eagles game, then you know that the parking lots around Lincoln Financial Field are jam-packed with tailgaters. But let me tell you something, those tailgaters do it at home and on the road, as Giants fans recently found out. We, we showed up at 9 o'clock this morning, we were the first people here. Put a little Philly cheesesteak menu together, so we bring a little Philly up to New York. We got some cheese whiz, we got the provolone, we got the American cheese, whatever you need. Whittle without. Whittle without onions. All right, favorite moment at Giants Stadium, a few years back, James Thrash, big touchdown to win the game. I was here with all my buddies, all my buddies from Rutgers that are Giants fans, so they've been rubbing in my face for years because we hadn't won for a while. Big Eagles win, Thrash, big touchdown, Monday Night Football, definitely my favorite Meadowlands moment ever. Unfortunately, with this being the bye week, well, there's not going to be a whole lot of tailgating going on. As a matter of fact, there won't be a whole lot of anything going on, especially from a player's standpoint, as I'm sure most of the players will use this week to kind of chill and relax at home. Speaking of which, Eagles cornerback Sheldon Brown invited us into his home, and here's where number 24 spends most of his free time away from Lincoln Financial Field. Well, if you're going to hang out during the bye week, what better place to hang out than right there at Sheldon Brown's house. Folks, that's going to do it for this edition of Eagles Locker Room. I'm Phil Andrews. We'll catch you next time. Hello, 
everyone, welcome back to Live at the Oak, presented by American Express. I am Phil Anders, and you're getting a very good aerial shot of the surroundings here. The USTA, Billie Jean King National Tennis Center. You see the baseball uh, stadiums there, the new and old for the New York Mets. Now we come down to earth, if you will, and speaking of earth, we brought our angel with us. Oh, Karina Marari, you were coming to join us, and I did miss you yesterday. We're, I was, I was all out of, out of sorts. I was out of sorts. I was too. I was too. I had the night off, so that so you really had, so, threw me off. So I know. I actually got to enjoy You're, the city for a night. Crazy. One of the, one of the hardest working uh, women in, uh, in show business, folks. All right, let's get right to it because this is a big day for the ladies. You know, I had a, they had a chance to sit back and chill yesterday, but today we got two very big semifinals coming up. The first of which is Elena Dementieva taking on Yelena Yankovic. And uh, I mean, both of them have played very well here in this tournament. Well, we honestly have probably the four best players in the draw left. Office space? Office everybody, space. A cult move, everybody watches. Everyone Absolutely. pulls it out and watches that. Yeah. This guy, Wayne Knight. I'm not going to do it, but can I? I mean, I, I've, been, I've been practicing, but everyone said you shouldn't sure, do it. Sure, go ahead. Do it. No, no, you won't. No, go I won't. Ahead, no, let's let's try. no, go ahead, do it. Let's, let's do see it. what happens. <laughs> Hello, <laughs> Newman. Everybody knows Newman from Seinfeld. Of course, he's done many, many other things. My kids, by the way, love Space Jam. Okay. I'm a big Jurassic Park fan. Well, I, I thought you were great in Jurassic Park. Oh, I thank you very much. That was years ago, and and I was bigger than, and then I sweated, and there was stuff. And you and you were the bad guy. I usually yes. I'm usually all the bad guys. Now, you want to now, leave. now, fellas, look yes. at the, look at this. This is. This is one of Hollywood's uh, up-and-comers over here. <laughs> Look at this kid. Look how young he is. He is young. Unbelievable. He is young. Hey, ladies, eat your heart out. <laughs> Chase Crawford. Yeah, Chase Crawford from Gossip Girl. Talk, I always talk to the celebrities about what their connection is and what they like about, about tennis. And you said you're old school. You're an old school yes. tennis fan. Yes, I've enjoyed tennis ever since that there were little tiny thimble-sized rackets made of rattan. Uh, I, oh, way, way back. I, I like uh, Rosewall and Labor and, and wanting to see Labor's big left arm and stuff like that way oh yeah so so are there any are there any tennis players today that you really do like i mean no you're joking around with me god no no are you no, kidding no. no they're so fast so young so strong no and of course, and of course, Stephen. When I asked him if he was a tennis, if he was an old tennis fan too, Stephen, you just said, "I'm old." That's it, right? Yeah. But hey, look, uh, we got Nadal, uh, Federer now, and I was a huge uh, Sampras Agassi fan, so I'm I'm thrilled to be here. It's what great. I'd like to know is, is if any of you people around the world are ever going to leave the house? Are you ever going to leave your house? Come here. I mean, come See here. this stuff? This is the best place in the world. Why aren't you here now? Konnichiwa. Oh, very good. Oh, Stephen Root. Stephen. Steve, I am surrounded by greatness. Stephen Root, Wayne Knight, Chase Crawford, uh, Hollywood uh, future, Hollywood now, okay? No, 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 Hollywood now. Listen, Phil Andrews, this is Live at the Open, presented by American Express. Gentlemen, this is a pleasure for me. Enjoy the night matches here at Arthur Ashe Stadium. Go get them. All right, thank you. We'll be back right after this U.S. Open memorable moment from American Express. All right, Adrian, look at these good-looking guys. I get surrounded by these good-looking guys all the time. Adrian Grenier, and we have, uh, let me see, Jerry Ferrar, yes. Turtle. Yes. Vincent Chase. Better known as. Better known as Vincent Chase. Based on the Entourage series, which is getting ready to start its fifth season, I do believe. September 7th, you guys kick off? 10 p.m. September 7th. Yes. But what, you know, you, you, the reason that is significant is because the U.S. Open. Okay, ends on September 7th. So what we want to do is they're going to crown the men's champion that night. Then we want them to go and watch you guys on uh, HBO. Get a nice smooth transition. Hopefully they'll be a little tipsy and they can go into our show. Oh, yeah. Something's not right. This is like Michael and Tito without Jackie Marlin and, and Jermaine. We're, 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 we're the rest of the guys. Yeah. Um, some of the other guys actually had some things they couldn't get out of. Family, birthday parties. Um, I think Jeremy Piven will be here later on, but uh, so you got us. That's it. Yeah, uh, you got Michael oh, oh, and Tito. Wait, wait, wait. I'll be Tito. I'll hey, be Tito. hey, you Tito? I'll be Tito. Does so that make you Michael? I'll be him. He's got to be Michael. Uh -huh. Well, you're the pretty one. Mike, Michael, Michael, Michael was the pretty one, right? Uh, <laughs> well, he wasn't. He was at one point. He was at one point. Now I got to ask you, you, guys, tennis fans, or are you just here for the line? I mean, this is a great place to be. Uh, I'm just here for the prestigious event. Like I just like to be part of. The, the tradition that is, and it's in New York, so I'm very excited about that. We're, we're here promoting the show. We all, we're all from New York, so I have my family here. I've got my grandmother, my aunt, and they, they really love tennis. By the way, the last time I saw a picture of you, your beard was really full. That looks a lot better. It looks better on you anyway. Oh, thank you. <laughs> anyway, we're here talking with the fellows from Entourage. Of course, a minus three guys, but you guys can hang, right? 
Oh, we, we will represent for the ones that are not here. And you are representing. Now, you know, uh, Adrian just said that this show is based in New York. Actually, I do believe your character is from the, the borough of Queens, and we're actually in the borough of Queens. So maybe we could do an episode where you guys come back east and do something here at the Open for uh, one of the shows. Well, it's funny because we actually did shoot uh, some of one of our episodes here in Queens. Not at the Open, unfortunately, but uh, as always next year. Uh, you said interesting. Why? <laughs> well, you predicted uh, pretty much... Uh, oh, did I did I spill did the I say, did I spill the beans? Did I say that? Did I spill? Is this top secret? All right, no, hey, hey, that is top secret stuff. Sorry, fellas, I didn't know, I didn't know that. I had a lady come up to me today. See those two young ladies over there? Okay. This one young lady said, if they ever did a movie on Pete Sampras's life, you'd be the guy to pay, play Pete Sampras. But you look so much like. Him. Yeah, I, I get movie offers like that all the time from random people who have no ability to put me in the movie. So you know, if somebody's out there making a movie, I, I'll. I'll be him. Well, if he'd be Pete Sampras, who would you? I'd be Andre Agassi. Oh, I like it. Are you willing to shave the beard? Absolutely. But and he the hair? The no, but are you willing to shave? Oh, you gotta go bald. I'll shave it right now. All Let's right. do it. All right, I love that. You guys are great for, for stopping by. Thanks so Jerry Ferrer, Turtle from the Entourage. Adrian Grenier, Vincent Chase. Thank you very much for stopping by. Hey, listen, guys, enjoy it tonight. The tennis has been fantastic. Okay. Right. Thanks for stopping by. All right, folks. That's gonna do it for this day eight edition. Video Vault. General Assignment Reporting, Phil Andrews, WHYY Television, Wilmington, Delaware. Just one day after announcing his national security team, it was on to the next item on the President-elect's to-do list, as Barack Obama reached out to the National Governors Association by joining them today here at Philadelphia's Independence Hall in an effort to get their input on his proposed recovery plan. Just the fact that he did that, uh, it's a whole new different dynamic, uh, 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 sort of a, a reinforcement of the traditional partnership between the federal government and the states, which has been lacking for the last eight years. So it was an extraordinary meeting held in, of course, uh, as historic a setting as you could get. Um, but, but the meeting produced some great exchanges. Barack Obama and congressional Democrats have promised that shortly after Inauguration Day, he will sign an economic stimulus bill that could exceed $500 billion. Of course, the big question still remains. With both the banking and auto industries looking for their share of any bailout money, what guarantees did the president and vice president-elect offer the governors today? And there were no guarantees, but I can tell you the president-elect and vice president-elect were very clear that they understand that getting people to work, making sure that people's basic needs are taken care of, uh, is an important part of this, uh, this package. Uh, so I feel pretty confident that, and although Vice President Biden did say, we've got to make sure that the governors are on board to sell the package in Congress. Delaware's governor-elect Jack Markell, one of 48 governors in Philadelphia today, a group that also included Alaska's Sarah Palin and California's Arnold Schwarzenegger, who spoke of using some of the stimulus funds to rebuild the country's infrastructure. There's $136 billion of infrastructure projects ready to go all over the United States. By the way, the governors are expected to request a total of $176 billion of stimulus money, including $40 billion to bolster Medicaid. The Trabant Student Center here in Newark truly was election central last night. After all, Bloomberg News recently dubbed the University of Delaware the epicenter of the presidential campaign, and rightfully so, because in addition to newly elected Vice President Joe Biden, Obama campaign manager David Plouffe and McCain campaign manager Stephen Schmidt, all UD alum, which made for a very interesting night here on the UD campus. I think people are more excited for this campaign than ever before, especially young voters. Uh, just being in this state, I feel so involved already because of all the uh, because of all the people that are involved from Delaware, so it's definitely very exciting. I think you can sense that excitement right in the room here tonight. Uh, these students, I think, really have a feeling of being in the middle, in the thick of it, so to speak. And if this election taught us anything, it taught us just how powerful the media can be. Each election cycle, we see the media playing more and more and more of a role. What's significant this time around is how new media have really changed the game. Candidates know that they can target audiences in a different way um, if they use new media versus traditional media. And judging by the record number of young voters who turned out for this election year, it's clear that both candidates were successful in their efforts to reach the young vote. I just turned 18, so I was really excited. I, I've been looking forward to this my whole life and seeing my parents vote at every election. And they were really great about teaching me the importance of voting. And being this such a huge presidential election, I was really excited to, to make my, my vote count. I went with my mom today and just 
I, I went in and when I finished voting, I just had like this big grin that's been carrying me throughout the whole day. I did um, vote for the first time and I went with my family. It was definitely a family event, so I had, you know, definitely an exciting time because, you know, once you get in there, we went to a church. Once you get in there and you vote, you do a lot of different, you know, a lot of different things um, go through your mind and it's, a, it's actually, you know, a thrilling experience. But with choice of candidate aside, it was clear by the end of this night that many of these young voters felt a sense of unity as they watched history unfold before their very eyes. In Newark, Phil Andrews, WHYY News. Smyrna Dinah has been a local landmark since 1956, but folks, that was then. This is now. Say hello to the new and considerably larger version of the eatery, located about two miles south of the old diner. We're very excited. It's, it's been crazy in here, very busy. It's been a lot different from our old facility where it was only 75 people. Now we have 217 we're trying to feed, and it's been a lot of kinks to work out, but we're doing really good now. Now, the relocation and rebuild of the diner was made possible through the Small Business Resource 504 Loan Program. The 504, with credit being as tight as it is, is a terrific program where with a relatively low down payment of the owner, the SBA's involvement in a second position, making the bank feel more comfortable in a lower first mortgage, we hope is going to assist small businesses that are having trouble getting credit. In all, the SBA, Delaware Community Development Corporation, and Wilmington Trust financed $2,580,000 of the project, about 90%, leaving the owners with a very manageable 10% responsibility. It came to a point where if we didn't have this financial backing um, and we would never, we would have ceased to exist. And uh, so without them, we definitely would never have made it this far. You know what, Dawn, when I think of a diner, I think of home cooking, almost as good as mom's, but not quite. Question is, what's good here at the Smyrna? I'm here for the mac and cheese, which they call a vegetable. And I just go along with it. Item that I liked the most really some time ago was the chicken, the chicken and dumplings and chicken. Scrap on eggs. Probably chicken and dumplings, <laughs> or the uh, dumpling pea soup. Now folks, my father was in the Air Force, so usually I do not pick a side in this game, but this year, well this year, I think I'm going to go Navy. Say what? Who said? What? I said that, Captain Crunch. There's no way your sailor boys be my army cadets tomorrow. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Well, the truth is, you can't handle the truth. Well, I tell you what, be here tomorrow at 12 o'clock for kickoff, oh, and we'll be see. Here. And then I'll watch Action News at 6 and 11 for the highlights. You know, with that said, folks, for Phil Andrews, I'm Phil Andrews, Channel 6 Action News.